but today we are going to look at how to customize your checkout form on Google Forms. So this is my checkout form. I wanted to show you what it looked like. Um, so the first is three sections and the first part is pretty basic. It has their name and then class period and then what you're checking out. And this is kind of where it gets a little bit fancy. So if they're checking out supplies because in my classroom, I let them check out the class notebook or markers or whatever they need for whatever we're doing. They can check those out or they can check out a book, of course. So the answers or the questions that are asked are different based on what they're checking out. So the supplies, if they click supply, it will automatically take them to this section. And then if they could click book, it will take them to this section. So let's look at what it looks like in action. So I can go to preview. So what they would do is just type in their name. I'm going to use my name, Savannah Kepley. And then the class period, I'm going to guess first. And then I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to check out a book. And that will take them to this section. So let's say I'm checking out Lois or the giver. And it's by Lois. I can't type today. Lowry. And of course, giver needs to be capitalized. And then I say, I'll, I'll let them pick the return date. If they have a little bit more ownership over it, maybe it will happen. So let's say it'll take a week to get it back and submit. And that will automatically come to me. And I'm going to show you how to organize all that in just a minute as well. So let's say I was checking out a supply. Let's look and see what that looks like. So again, they'll enter their name and the class period, supply, and then it takes them to another set of questions. So some people might be checking out the class notebook. And then the purpose to catch up since I was absent. And then with class notebooks, I only usually allow a day. So they'll have to submit it the next day or bring it back the next day. And that is it. So I'm going to show you how to make this Google form. It's great. It's a lifesaver and it automatically goes to Google Sheets. I made this and I've included it in my essential routines and procedures manual capsule with resources and all the great stuff. If you want to look at that, that's linked below or I'm going to show you how to make your own in just a minute. All right, so let's show you how to make this form for your classroom. So this is just a basic Google form that I opened up and I'm going to go ahead and title it my check out form. I'm going to do that. It automatically puts it right there. Now you can write any description that you would like here. Something along the lines of, this is my personal stuff. Please take care of it. Please fill out this form. Be responsible. All that good stuff. Now, this is the first section, so it will be basic. So we click the plus sign to add a question. And I'm going to start with first name. And I'm going to make that required because, you know, they won't do it if it's not required. Some of them last name. Again, I'm making it required. I'm going to add another question and then class period. I like to have drop downs for that. So I click over here and then click drop down and then I type in my options. So you, you can do first period, second period, third period, or fourth period, or however you name your classes. You might have something fancy. And then finally, you have what are you checking out? So in my class, again, they can check out some supplies or they can check out books. And then I'm making this required. So as you can see over here, there is not an option yet to go to the next section because we haven't created the next sections. So we need to go ahead and create the section for supply and books. So I press these two little lines right here. It looks like an equal sign. And this creates my next section. So this is going to be for the supply checkout. And then I'm going to add, like, what are you checking out? I'm going to let this be a short answer question because there's a lot of different things they can check out. However, if you just have a limited thing, amount of things, you could do a check out, check what is that called? A drop down box or a multiple choice thing? Whatever floats your boat. So, what are you checking out? I'm making that required. Why are you checking it out? What's the purpose? 
And then finally, when are you going to return it? Again, I like them to have ownership over that. That automatically changes to the date. So we already have a section. So let's go back up to this question. What are you checking out in the first section? So what we need to do is click on this question, click these three dots, and then click this. Go to section based on answer because we want it to get to a different section based on what they answer. So I click there. This says go to section two. So I click that. So when they click supplies, it will go to section two, which is right here. Now I haven't made my book one yet. Let me go down here and do that. Click on my last question, add another section. And we're gonna title this book, check out. So now we add our question. So title, make that required, author. Again, short answer, make that required, and then return date. And that will automatically pop up there. So I had this section built out, so I'm going to come up here to section one. Again, click on this last question, and then they will go to section three. Yay! Now, there's one other step that you need to do. After they finish the section, you need to tell the form what to do. So after they finish section, filling out all the questions for the supply, they can go ahead and submit the form. After section two, they'll submit it, and then this one will automatically submit for them. So we're, that's your checkout form. Now again, you can customize it, make it pretty, choose images. Always choose the book ones. <laughs> and insert those and then there you have it you have your checkout form great job <laughs>